Hello, everybody. Welcome to the 50 Question Friday, uh, number eight for May 22nd of 2020. Um, so as usual, would like to say hello to everybody here this morning and um, would like to go into the heart space if we could. So again, going into the sacred space of the heart is simply doing the three breaths to move your consciousness from here down into the physical heart. So you can close your eyes if you wish and just put your attention onto your physical heart where we find your light. Deep breath in, that first breath, we breathe from the earth, from that heart of the earth. We breathe in that energy up through the feet and right up into the heart, connecting our heart with the heart of Mother Earth. The next breath, we connect to soul, source, creator, God, however you see and say that higher power, that higher loving consciousness. So as we breathe in that energy of creation, we breathe that right into the heart. The third breath is breathing both earth and sky, breathing those together within your heart. And mixing those together and expanding them. So that brings you into the heart space, grounded, connected. And that's where we like to begin everything we do with. All right. Hey, good morning, everybody. <laughs> All right. We got some phenomenal people on today. Thank you guys for being here. Um, and again, please do, uh, for those who, who are live, please do write your questions over here in the questions tab. And I'm going to start with um, some of the questions from emails. So the the one question that I have from, from Laura is... A bunch of my friends who all use things like orgone pyramids in their houses or shungite with their computers were asking for more info why they'd want to use the copper tensor ring tools instead. And then goes on um, about basically the why not use crystals question. Um, so when you're using um, orgone or crystals, they all work within certain levels and layers of frequency. They all are working within a certain bandwidth where they're producing frequencies um, and consciousness, that is in the case of crystals and orgone that has crystals within it. Um, and so within these certain bandwidths, that is what they can touch. Now, the, the tensor tools are in very different bandwidths of frequency, of fields. The tensor fields contain greater fields, which within those are a plethora of different frequencies. And actually within like all the harmony, the golden fire, all of those tools are actually found the frequencies and properties of all the plant, crystal and mineral kingdoms of this planet, as well as the different cosmic rays of light, as well as like in the golden fires, the sacred heart. Um, so within those larger fields of the of the tensor tools, um, they just cover a lot more and they do a lot more things. Um, you know, like orgone, there is not orgone that can by itself as an innate piece of physical material transform 5G millimeter waves. That is something that we do with the golden fire of the sacred heart and a quantum energy tool called the golden light rod. Um, and this is a physical representation of that. So for transforming the, the 5G stuff, it takes these larger and higher bandwidths of frequencies within these fields. And so the, the tensor fields are, are doing that, plus they're working with consciousness. And another reason I like the tensor tools over orgone, and again, they work together very well. The, the tensor fields harmonize and synergize with orgone, organite, with crystals. Um, I'd suggest using them together. Um, and, and that's the thing is that when you bring a crystal, 
let's see, we have tensor ring. We bring a crystal, these rose quartz within this ring. The two will amplify each other. They synergize, harmonize, amplify each other. Um, so if you love your crystals and you love your orgone, I would suggest using a ring in conjunction with them. Um, those great things. So moving on here to another question that we have in email. Let me fish through my emails here. And again, thank you guys for being here today. Appreciate the support. Um, it's nice to see everybody here or else I have other really fun things to do on Friday. It's getting spring fever here, so I'd love to be outdoors today, but a lot of work to do. Um, then uh, Lynn asked a question about um, the, and again, this is about the, the communication towers um, and specifically the, the canisters that they use for, for 5G. So basically any of the small cell transmitters or in the case of like a 5G millimeter wave, which, you know, you don't find the 5G millimeter wave transmitters very around that much. They're always the 5G millimeter wave or always like a flat faced uh, because the millimeter wave only projects in a straight line. Now then, the the other fifth generation of communication towers are the, those clusters, the cylinders that shoot in all directions, just like the 4G, just like the 3G. Um, you know, and, and the G just stands for generation. They're, they're a mix of just different frequencies. So what is it that... Um, people always ask what tool can you put like at the base of towers or a, a ring around something at the base of the tower. In all actuality, having a golden fire generator of any size within one mile of a tower is gonna to be transforming that. Now to take this a step farther and instead of transforming that, we would much rather utilize that tower, that transmission wave and utilize it for something beneficial. That is where the golden fire and light wands come in. Now, this is again, just the physical representation. We walk people through light anchoring, like light anchoring 3.0. Um, I've been doing light anchoring videos for several years. The, the newest is the 3.0, but it's basically the same as, you can also watch the product video for the golden fire and light wands. It is, basically doing the consciousness work. Now, all the tools that we create are subtle energy tools. This is not just a piece of twisted copper wire in a ball. This is an etheric energy tool. It is the golden fire energy within this, as well as the columns of light that are within this, the golden fire and the golden light that are transforming these millimeter waves and all the other non-beneficial electromagnetics. So you can do this with consciousness in the heart space, creating these columns of light. You attune to the golden light rod, which is an ancient etheric tool older than this universe. It'll move geopathic and geomagnetic lines. It'll clear portal vortexes. Then the golden fire aspect, which is activating the sacred heart, it is the golden fire aspect that does all the heavy duty transformations of electromagnetics as well. So to try to answer the question so that it will inspire people to go out and create these columns of light, that is the most powerful thing that we can do is to go in the heart space, use our consciousness and create these columns of light once we're attuned to it. And that is transforming all the 5G, all the cell towers, um, waterways, cemeteries, schools, hospitals. And I tell you, columns of light, because that's why I go around the country and the world teaching light anchoring is because it is one of the most powerful things that we can do. Um, truly is. And the rest of these tools are phenomenal too, but you know, again, we always see these tools as training wheels for us. All right, next question. How long does it take to charge water with the harmonic creation field trio? So any of the tensor fields exposing water um, to the tensor field is going to clear the water energetically, automatically. You know, the 
uh, the memory of water. So it does the energetic aspect instantly. But for the physical restructuring of water, it takes anywhere from four to six hours of water within the, the column of, of energy. So with a harmonic creation field trio or any of the tensor rings, four to six hours is what we recommend having your water within that field. And then the there's other two other parts of this question. Also, how long does the water stay charged after removing from the harmonic creation field trio? If it was in a vacuum space with no outside forces acting upon it, that water would stay in that high spin rate with that um, memory and information indefinitely. But since we live in a world where there is always something electromagnetic or consciousness, um, emotion fields, all of that, that come in to affect the water, the water then is, is changed depending on its environment. Um, so it, it just depends on the environment um, of how long water stays charged. And then the third part of the question is, will water lose its charge after being in the refrigerator? Um, the, the hot and cold isn't going to have anything to, to do with this aspect of being in the refrigerator. It would be more along the lines of, again, the outside forces, the electromagnetic fields of the refrigerator, of the pump, um, you know, because there's uh, motors within that refrigerator. So there's, and, and also electricity. So there's those forces that act upon it. Um, but really, if you're going to charge water, put it in the fridge having it there for a day is still going to be perfect great water it really is um and you could just take it a step farther and charge all your water in a refrigerator with the rings um all right i believe we had just a couple more questions here um let's see i think we might have one more Uh -huh. Nope. All right. So those are some other questions that I'll just need to, to answer by, by email because they're um, multi-faucet questions. All right. So back to the chat here and seeing everybody. Oh, my goodness. It's 1.35 a.m. in Sydney, Australia right now. Well, thanks for being here, Martin. Um, yeah. Thank you guys for all being here this morning. Um, and Samson, yes, we did do the heart space meditation when we first jumped on here. All right. So we're going to go to the questions tab here. Um, a little glitch there. All right. So we'll go to the questions tab and we will start with the, the first questions first, or the, the oldest questions first. Um, did you try to look at the bovis value of your tools, dowsing bovis chart? You know, we have had people look at the bovis value of the tools, um, and I don't remember. They're in the millions. But here's something, too. Thank you for, um, gosh, and Shannon is, I, I, I am the worst with names, so my apologies on the mispronunciation of your name. Um, the we're actually creating a new product line right now which i didn't mention last week but this is one that i'm super super excited about um and by the way we just released the the sits pyramid the meditation pyramid just was released here this morning on the 22nd of may um so that's going to be available we're going to do a product webinar on the 29th of may on the sits pyramid um and then the the quantum gridding pyramids those hopefully will be done by June 1st and ready to release. But anyway, back to the, the question here about the bovis value. And basically the bovis value is using a pendulum and you have a chart and this has a bovis scale. Um, it used to be that, you know, about five, six years ago, most people were not able to reach a million bovis because it would just cause them to float off people just could not handle that now you know let's see what is it i think it's like fourteen thousand is the average human bovis scale and bovis is basically like a light scale 
how much light, how much energy, how much frequency levels of it that something contains. So you can use the bovis chart with a pendulum and find out if you should read a book or if it is a lower bovis scale than you. Obviously, this is a high bovis scale healing the handbook. Phenomenal stuff. Um, so, I mean, you can use a pendulum to Dow's to find the bovis scale of anything, people, books, um, food, water. So the new tool that we are creating is actually it's a harmonic creation field trio that is going to be inlaid in the, the echopoxy, the plant-based resin, and it will have a bovis chart on there. And on the back side, you'll be able to use it to not only use any pendulum you have and connect it to the third templates of pendulums that we've created years ago, which are phenomenal. They connect to a crystal city and basically it'll clear a pendulum and connect it to a higher space to where you can use it better. And then on that back side of this Bova scale chart, it's also going to be a spot where you can basically do the healing work with people by putting their picture or an intention or, you know, radionically people would write a name, birthday, or put a sample of hair or fingernail. You know, it's kind of like a radionics, but it's basically just intention of putting the person within this harmonic creation field trio, this plate, and being able to do the work with them. Um, really exciting. Can't wait to get that one going. But as far as checking the bovis scale of our tools, yeah, they're, they're, they're up there. Um, millions. You know, it, it's like I was saying um, in the beginning of this question about how most people couldn't reach a certain bovis scale because it was just too much. Six years ago, like when we checked my sister Brenda, we had a master dowser friend who was like, okay, I can raise your bovis scale by using the pendulum in your rings. And um, she got Brenda to like a million and a half. And she's like, wow, I've never seen anybody ever that high. And then Brenda's like, well, I can go higher. And yeah, she went over 2 million just by going into the sacred space of the heart. Um, and I know I did check the other day on a Bova scale and I was just looking at a ring and it was like 15 million or something. I don't even know. But again, this tool is going to be phenomenal because it's going to help people be clean, clear and connected so that they get the correct readings when they're using a pendulum. How big of a field of the silver Taurus is a question. Um, so the silver Taurus, this guy right here, it creates a field. So within this physical parameter, the field of that Taurus pendant is, is just a little bit larger than your physical field, about the same size as your physical field. So you could say that it's six, 10, about six to eight feet across. That's all the bigger this field is within this physical plane. But with, again, with these regeneration tools and especially with the silver, it's more about how big the field is as it connects through all the different levels and layers that we exist upon. That's, that's truly the biggest, the biggest aspect of these. Let's see, and then a question here. Sound is also vibration. If I put the tensor generator in front of the speaker, can the generator broadcast sound frequency? Yes, totally. So anytime that you run light, sound, um, thought, whatever frequency, no matter on the level and plane that that frequency is within, whenever you run that through the generator, it will harmonize that. So that's why we have like the crystal bowls and we make the rings that go around the base of crystal bowls because it changes the, the, the sound, it changes the quality. Um, so yes, totally, you can put the generator in front of a speaker and it will, it will broadcast that energy that's coming out of the speaker because there is always energy consciousness that is attached to that voice, that recording. Um, and so if it is something funny, like let's say you like punk music, but you don't like how it feels. Yeah. Then you just put this in front of your speaker and then you are transforming any of the, the consciousness aspect of it, but the sound you still receive. No, just a 
just a thought there. Hi, is your 5G package, I have your 5G package. I was wondering how they compare to the tensor rings and tools sold on eBay. Well, we don't sell any of ours on eBay, so um, I see people do sell some of ours tools on eBay um, when they have them. I've seen it before, but um, really, you know, I, I, <laughs> I try to avoid that question. Basically, I personally love our tensor tools. I feel we are very much at the leading edge of the expansion of consciousness on not only this planet, but in the universe. And I feel that the tools that we create are in no comparison to the tools that Slim created back when he started. The world was not ready at that time for the tools that Slim was working with, the 144, the 177, the 188. So the tools that we create contain those certain frequencies, you know, of, that I just mentioned, but so much more, it's such a higher bandwidth. So most people out there are making the same tools that Slim made. And then two, when you are a tensor tool maker, as I found out in the beginning, when I made my first 50 rings, there were some that were non-beneficial, some that didn't work, some that only worked on one side. So you really have to trust your tool maker. You have to trust that they are connected and that they are clear. The reason that I had stuff that wasn't working or that was non-beneficial was I was a scientist. I was science-minded. I had no idea about truly what I was working with. It took my sister, Brenda, and it is my sister, Brenda Schnoes with the Elders 3, that is the reason that our tools are so flipping phenomenal is because of the work that she does, and she's been my mentor of being in the heart space, of creating higher, and then the work that we do together, we step higher um, and broader. And so, yeah, I don't feel there's any comparison to most other tools, to the ones that we were making. There are, though, still some phenomenal tool makers out there. Samson's on here. He is one, of, he's, he's a very heart-centered, clean, clear individual. And I know he makes good tools, um, but majority of tools out there, I just, you know, tensor tools, energy tools, I just really have a hard time um, harmonizing with them, not harmonizing, um, but, you know, resonating with them. Um, so, yeah, and then to there, and then Melody, too, to go back to the question about the 5G package in comparison to the other tools out there. Um, please do watch one of my videos It's called um, 5G and the Empowered Human. And it talks about how in the beginning, the golden fire tools were not touching the 5G. And then it goes back to the work that we were doing with the light anchors that we put into, that Brenda and I put into the etheric templates of these tools of the golden fire that will transform the 5G. So that's it too, is that most tool makers do not know about etheric templates. And that is where the true power and potency of the tools that we create lie is within the, the etheric templates. Um, Bill has a question. Good morning, Brian. May a golden fire generator be used to deter crop pests and how? Um, we've actually done studies with the um, seven inch harmony generator. Now the seven inch harmony generator, we've done studies with a gentleman who does radionics and um, they put these all over in a field in New Zealand and they were able to move beetles out of a field and move them into the neighboring forest. And we didn't do this by saying, okay, beetles be gone. What we did was we put generators on the outside of the perimeter that were the draw because part of this whole new paradigm and working with this stuff is not, you know, is treating everything with that, you know, as, as a piece of divinity. So basically those beetles, we create a safe space for them outside of the field. And then within the field, we put the generators and then we broadcast um, into those generators to repel the beetles out of the field. So we had a push pull. Um, so as far as larger agriculture, yes, um, 
you truly can do the work with pests. Now, I always recommend the Harmony generators, specifically the larger one, the seven inch, because it creates a 12 mile sphere of influence. And for people who are doing larger, you know, fields, more than just, you know, our local growing fields, that those generators are, are a great tool. Now, the Harmony generators are also working with, again, still the consciousness of the plants, the consciousness of the land and all of those who reside there. Um, and so it takes a holistic approach to, to working with, with the crops. Um, so yeah, I was going to say we're doing, um, we do a radionics convention and locally here every year in October, it's radionics with the masters and KRT um, KRT is the, the radionics, um, producer who, who puts on these shows along with, um, Dr. Ron Barone now. So you can look up KRT for radionics and they might have some more information on using the radionics, um, basically to broadcast, to assist with, with what we're doing with the tensor field generators. Um, because they're into the agriculture. Have you ever anchored a column of light into your trauma or bad memories that you can't remember for childhood times maybe? Yes, totally. So you can you anchor those columns of light. You can put those columns of light at any point in time. Um, you know, kind of like our friend with Healing the Handbook, um, you know, Ken Graydon, how he talks about in, in here the processes and plus the work that we do, but this is just an easy way to do it, is to step back into time. Now with the processes, you basically, you go into the heart space and you go back in time and how he states it is your soul knows when before something occurred. So that's one way to do it. Another way, and then anchor that column of light into you or that situation at that time. Now, another thing that Brenda and I have always been doing is we'll go back in time to where, like, let's say a childhood trauma occurred and we go back there. And once we get there and we're in our heart space, we go there. We just imagine seeing ourselves right before or when that trauma occurred and we can put a bubble around ourselves. And we can be there as kind of like a guardian angel and be there for ourselves during that time, holding space, sending loving energy, and we can shift the past. Um, you know, and that's part of this universe and this world that we live in with timelines is that they're not set. We go back and we do those shifts just like we clear DNA through lineage just like you can clear a family curse that's been going on for generations. All that stuff is malleable. Um, and right now is a great time to be doing it. We're, we're very empowered right now to shift and change these old creations. Um, so how you do it though, is just simply being in a heart space because from there you can follow your soul, have your guidance, go to that time, anchor columns of light, use the bubbles, send the love, hold the space, make it simple for sure. Um, Christine. Um, oh, Christine's the one that I answered the email question about um, rings and crystals and says, I've been doing this since your items arrived Just amped up my healing for my clients. And that's awesome. Christine also says, I also use my fire gener generator with crystals and tensor rings. <laughs> if you see a glowing light, it's me. <laughs> All right, yep. Good stuff, Christine. Uh, Samson, when we place a tensor ring around a water vessel for a day or two, this creates ormus water, right? In your experience, does the water taste different? Yes. So that's what dancing with water talks about, too is creating ormus out of your drinking water, which is basically putting such a high spin rate to the water molecule that the water, that it oscillates in and out of physical reality. Now, the new science of water, they've done this where they put water on balance beams. They'll put a ring underneath the one vessel of water and it will become lighter in weight as, those, as the, the molecules spin faster, basically creating ormus. 
and I forget it's like orbitally orbitally restructured monoatomic. Oh man, I don't remember the exact acronym what ORMA stands for, but it's um, it is creating that water that yes, it does taste different. It feels different. And that's what I tell most people who get a tensor ring, any flavor and variety is to do that water test. Take two glasses of water, especially tap water, because you can really tell the difference or even bottled water is fine. Put one glass within this ring, leave the other glass not and leave it overnight and then the next day you can taste and feel physically feel as well as energetically, of course, the difference in the water. And that's really where it trips up that right hemisphere and starts to realize that something's going on there. Um, Martin asks a couple of weeks ago, you mentioned that the tools had an upgrade. I seem to notice this most of the shaman's wand and a lesser extent, the harming generator. Can you please talk more about these upgrades, please? Yes, it was in March that, well, for, let me take a step back for several months here. We've been since last fall, we've been waiting on this new, what we thought a new ring to come into being. We could see it. We could feel it. It was just so far out there and we couldn't anchor it in to, to the tools or to create this new ring. So we thought this new ring was coming in and it was sometime in March that this, new etheric template came in and it was the quantum harmony um, because we've been playing with these fields of neutrality which is in all the pyramid structures that we've been making is that field of neutrality and within neutrality once you can step into and hold that field of neutrality then there is another space that you go to of the quantum heart and from there harmony to where you are in a high space and you basically it's not even fields it's beyond fields and frequencies it's like your essence comes through and it shifts and changes it harmonizes you with what it is that you are looking at but then as you harmonize with it it brings it higher and it shifts and changes so as far as the new templates that we dropped into the tools back in March, it ended up not being a new ring, but it ended up to be a new etheric template that dropped into all the tools that we created. Because once we put something into the etheric templates, which is the higher dimensional aspect of the tools, once we place that into there, that's connects to every single physical tool that we make. And so when we do an upgrade, to the etheric templates, any ring within this field now is going to be that upgrade because truly the power and potency of this ring comes from its energetic higher aspect. And again, these spaces are very well guarded, guided, protected. They're beyond protection because they exist in that higher space of basically out of duality um, because it is only within this duality matrix where you have the words protection because it is it's it's a different world um so anyway this neutrality space is also coming through the tools now um the neutrality the quantum harmony so martin too with that question about you noticing that in the tools there were a few months where i was unable to wear any tools i would wear them just for decoration and then you know there was a few webinars that i was wearing the tools and I had to take them off right after the webinar because it, they, I was in a different vibration than them. And that's the first time that has happened in the 10 years that I've been making the tools <clears throat> is that I was not able to resonate with that vibration. And then once we dropped in those new templates of neutrality, of quantum harmony, then the tools shifted and I was able to wear them again and am loving wearing the tools again. All right, John. Hi, Brian. Will the infinite light pendant plus the golden fire coil give the same effect as the Taurus pendant? Also, when will you release the new wand? So the the golden fire coil and the infinite light um, aren't really going to make the 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 Taurus. But I tell you what, the infinite light pendant 
is just as phenomenal as the Taurus. So to me, the infinite light pendant is a lot crisper, cleaner. Um, to me, the infinite light pendant is almost a better pendant just for the fact that it's crisp, clean, and it's going to take you there. It's going to take you into that space of neutrality, of, of, of that universal harmony, all of that. Where the Taurus pendant to me and just how I see it, it's like it's more complicated. It's, it's creating a whole different field that is working in a broader way. So it's kind of like a filter. So instead of a beam of light that comes from this infinite light pendant, the Taurus pendant is more like creating this, this fractal energy that is working in a different way. Um, and I'm sorry that we just, we've been really trying to be able to explain that, but we're still getting a grasp on, on what that infinite light pendant versus the Taurus pendant are doing because it is, it's, it's beyond perception. Um, but definitely the Taurus pendant is my favorite. I, I love this pendant, but this is phenomenal as well. But no, you can't really add anything else to this to create the same field as, as the Taurus pendant. Uh, can we use the wings of talk like the golden fire and light wand as in your Instagram photos that which you use the wings of talk to create a column of light? Which tool would you use for anchoring the column of light, the wand or the wings of talk? Oh, by the way, back to the last question, John. I That wand that we were talking about releasing, it's not coming together yet, so we really don't know. And then going back again, um, to using the wings of talk or the golden light wand for anchoring columns of light. So that's it, is the wings of talk, you can create those columns of light. And actually within here is, this is anchored basically into here. So within the wings of talk, you do have the golden fire and light wand. That same energetics is within here. So you create columns of light with either of these. So the difference, which one I would use for which purpose is the wand is phenomenal for cell phone towers, water towers, cemeteries, things like that, where you are working with environmental energies, basically, um, you know, geopathic stress, water, all that. The wand is phenomenal for. Now, when you get to work with, um, I shouldn't have said cemeteries with this. This is more for working with consciousness. This is going to work with the environment, the wings of talk. But this is also bringing in levels and layers and support for working with conscious beings. Um, so when I'm working with people, like when I want to anchor a column of light into a school or a hospital, I'll actually use this because this brings more support for all the divine conscious beings within that field. This is pretty phenomenal. It still brings a lot of support, but not as much as the wings of talk. So, um, you know, you can use the wings of talk instead of using the golden fire and light wand. The golden fire and light wand is still one that I've promoted just because it's a lot easier for people to wrap their heads around this is what I would call the advanced light anchoring, but this one is doing again, more support for all those around. So yeah, anchoring columns of light, we really should step into the more advanced and start using these for sure. So thank you for that question. Um, will you ever make a larger fire golden, a larger fire generator than eight inches? I have larger crystals that I want to place them in. Yes, actually if we make, we don't sell them online, but I mean, we have, you know, 36 inch generators laying around here. Um, so we make any size of generator. So Christine, yeah, you're welcome to contact us. We don't do custom work here cause we're always so flipping busy, but we do still have a lot of things that are just hanging out here. I mean, I have, generators all over that are huge. So, um, 
you're welcome to, to get a hold of us, Christine, and we can see what we can do for you. If we anchor the light column into the water, does this light remain more remain more time in the water than any material? So when you anchor a column of light into the water, and when you just anchor a column of light in general, that light column will stay there for as long as needed, if not indefinitely. So to me, I would say, put a column of light into the water versus putting a tool into the water. Hedekas are still phenomenal to throw into the water. I love to do that all the time. But as far as a column of light versus any of the tools, yes, that column of light can possibly stay there indefinitely um, when you're using these columns of light. Now, if you're just creating a column of light from source and earth, those basic columns of light will only stay there for up to eight days until you put your attention back onto them. That's why we created the global love and gratitude grid to hold basic columns of light for longer periods of time. But then once we started using the golden light rod and then the golden fire, then those columns of light would stay there indefinitely if needed. Um, need something to block, neutralize any EMF fields, living space, especially Wi-Fi. I thought I saw a lady used your phone neutralizer and tested it with a meter. What do you recommend? Can you block everything with your tools in that space? Can you contact me directly? Oh, yes, you can contact me directly, Barry. Um, Twisted Sage at Hotmail. Now, to answer your question, really, so, and again, we don't block any electromagnetic fields because electromagnetics are our friends. We live in an electromagnetic universe. Our heart is an electromagnetic generator. Every cell is electromagnetic. It's, 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 it's what our physical reality is, is electromagnetic. So there are electromagnetics that are non-beneficial. They're, they're non-coherent. So that incoherency causes issues with our coherent fields. And so what we do is we use the, the tools to go through and bring coherency to all those electromagnetic fields. So you really only need a golden fire generator, any size within the home, and that will restructure the Wi-Fi transmissions, the cell towers, the, the dense consciousness from the neighbors down the road, all the stuff. I mean, it will transform, harmonize everything within that region, within that two miles. So basically, you can use a Wi-Fi ring, wherever I put it there, Wi-Fi ring. You can use this on your Wi-Fi, but once you do, you're still going to be getting everything else in the area. I mean, this is only going to work with the Wi-Fi router. So if you're going to get one tool, the golden fire generator, place it in the home and it'll cover everything. Um, you know, with a few exceptions, like with your electrical panel, if you are within five and a half to six feet of that electrical panel and you're right in that field, you know, you're going to need something on the electrical panel. Um, if you're carrying your cell phone, and your cell phone is right in your immediate field, you're gonna need something on your cell phone. Otherwise, this just not is not gonna be able to work within when you're right in the field of, of that energy. Um, this needs a little bit of a space. So basically think that a generator will cover everything that is free floating through the air, but if you're standing right in to do the field of something, then you need something on that emitter of that other field. Hey, does the golden fire rod still work perfectly if bent? Oh yes. Yeah, if you, oh, the rods, so the dowsing rods. Yes, energetically, um, you're not gonna be able to harm the wands or the rods, the dowsing rods, but you can bend them. So the dowsing rods, like, again, if you drop your dowsing rod on the floor, they're, they're kind of delicate, they will bend but you can just gently bend them back into place. That's not going to hurt anything. All that does is shift the balance of the rod. When you're holding the handle of the rod, it'll just kind of shift the balance. And like I spoke on one of the 50 questions is that some people actually bend their rods so that they're pointing down just a little bit, just so that they're not so squirrely because they're on ball bearing swivels. 
So that way the weight is kind of centered more to the front. Um, but yeah, it's only going to affect the, the balance of the rod, which you can certainly bend back. And Alda, hi Alda. <laughs> I'm from Italy and I definitely remember you. Do you suggest any radionic circuit to use with the light rod? Suggest any radionic circuit. Um, so for using radionics, you can drop the light rod into your witness wells or your broadcaster or any kind of radionic frequencies that you're using. I'm not sure if I'm answering your question correctly, Alda. So if that's not answering the question, please do type in again. Um, do you think to add a regeneration ring to your key pendant? Um, yeah, you certainly can. Key pendant. I don't have one here. So the key pendant, it is Untak the key, the Ankh of the now time. It looks kind of like the, um, well, it kind of looks like a cross with four members with the extra four on it. So Untak the key. The key pendant um, is both the golden fire and the harmony. So that's basically, you know, the frequencies of the wand. Now you can totally add a um, anything else like the regeneration ring to the key pendant because that would amplify it. Now, and because it brings it closer to being like the wings of talk, it'll be a different energetic, but still those three together, that trio together is phenomenal. So yeah, please do play with the key pendant and try adding one of the small regeneration rings to it and see how that shifts and feels because it does do different things to it. Um, can I carry my pendant inside of my pocket or does it need to be worn around my neck close to my heart for it to do its work? No, actually, JT, you can carry, if you have a pendant, pendants, the tools are best near the heart. That's just where they are bringing us more into the heart. They're expanding. The tools just work best near the heart for all that expansion, opening, things like that. But if you are working with just wanting to keep your field cleared, you grounded, connected, having the tool anywhere on your body, in your pocket, is going to be perfect. It is still going to bolster your field and do the same for transforming um, energies that come into your field. Do the bracelet generators still work when they are not perfectly spherical when opened? Yes, most certainly. So the tensor field generators, when they are fully collapsed, they're creating that column of light. When they are just even partially spherical, they are still creating that sunshine effect. So as long as they're not completely collapsed, as long as they are semi-spherical, and even if the rings are all bent out of shape or the geometries, the squares and triangles don't look like squares and triangles, still perfect. It is going to be producing that sunshine effect and still have that same range of influence. Uh, what is the gauge of the mini regeneration Gaia rings? Oh, those tiny little ones. So I'm actually talking my nephew, my shop foreman, Lucas, <laughs> into making some of those for us. Because I wear once in a while the little tiny, tiny silver Gaia sphere. And that is actually a 20 gauge is what gauge those are. And yeah, I think we're going to start making some of those mini silver Gaias in limited runs because they're tough to do. Uh, Marsha asks, hi, Brian, my brother's moving back into his apartment building, which is historic and also suffered a lot of damage from Hurricane Florence. There's a lot of strange energy swirling in there. What do you do to suggest that I can leave in his apartment or clear or neutralize his energy? <laughs> yeah. Um, we just might be doing the work with all of our attention on there right now too. Um, so basically golden fire generators are phenomenal. The wings of talk is a really good one. Um, yeah, I, I'd almost say the wings of talk. Um, you can anchor a column of light using the light rod or the wings of talk. And actually again, you can actually go to the product page of the Wings of Talk and or of the Light Wand, but it's just the Wings of Talk, 
and go into the product page and we basically walk you through how to anchor that column of light and leave it there and receive the attunement to the tool without actually having to buy one because again these are quantum tools that the true power and potency is in that higher dimensional plane so the 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 wings of talk can be used without having to own the physical tool and you don't have to be there so you can sit in front of your computer you can walk through the video of that product page of the wings of talk and you can anchor that column of light of the wings of talk right there into his space and that will hold space for him too or you can get the tool and you can take it there and you can leave it there that's a phenomenal way to do it too um, whatever way you can get your mind to to allow that to happen um, Justin is there any way to clear dark entities from a person or home with any of the tools perhaps the golden fire and light wand you know and again that goes back to the wings of talk again um, Justin is because we actually created the wings of talk when we first were creating it we had the intention of making something for some of our energy worker friends who were dealing with entity attachments including those related to soul contracts and and also entities that were coming out of portal vortexes and so you know we we number one would rather do it with the consciousness work but um we actually made the wings of talk originally so that somebody had a physical tangible tool that they could use because they weren't able to allow themselves to do the consciousness work um and and have it stick and stay and 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 actually work um so the physical tool the wings of talk is one that can do that heavier duty clearing work um and and it's just a lot more powerful than the generators and again you can use the wand and do do it with the wand but the wings of talk is just more apt to work with consciousness um, to do that work and Carol I am new to tensor rings as the golden fire generators help with environmental issues mold dust EMFs so you know Carol it does work with um, EMFs because it is transforming them now as far as working with with mold um, viruses bacterias um, pests insects things like that all of those are fields of consciousness and so that is one of the things that because I can't give you a, you know I can't say yes it's gonna do this for mold um, that's not anything that we can say or anything that we hear consistently that it works with mold basically it is creating a high vibration space where denser consciousness does not want to be it will shift dense consciousness or else it will move out um, kind of like what you see with people in a neighborhood <laughs> you know they they either shift or they move out um, you know or else they stay there uncomfortably and that's the way it is working with with the molds is that this is working with molds as a field of consciousness and is creating a higher vibration space but it is also working on the physical because it is bringing the physical higher in vibration too um, so I, I wish I had a straight answer for you there Carol but um, I would say try it I would say try it and please do share if you do try it on on what occurs there and and two when you use it use it with intention and knowing and from the heart that you are doing this clearing work for there because part of what's going to be either preventing the 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 outcome could be again the mind not allowing blocking um helping to override something that is actually beneficial and doing the work you can actually override it by your own beliefs um, things like that so if you do get this generator and you place it into the space where you have the mold be in the heart space and see the mold as a consciousness 
and act in a loving manner towards it and then act for, ask for it to shift and change and move out um, because we don't we can't go we can't fight things we can't go to war with things especially when we are working with these co-creative um, fields uh, so, I hope I answered that okay Carol Samson with the new quantum gridding tool I have an idea kind of similar to a new tower buster but something super small combination of organite with tensor rings a very small size for example missing link puzzle pieces which Samson makes these little orgone puzzle pieces with a mini tensor ring ether silver or copper so the the quantum gridding tool that we created it it doesn't have the harmonic creation field trio physically in it but we created the etheric template of this little pyramid to actually hold the energetics of the harmonic creation field trio in it. So yes, Samson, when you're creating your little piece of organite and you are working with the etheric templates, you can basically create something energetically in the physical. Well, you can create something in the physical that will hold something energetic that might not be physically there. So yes, Samson, I think you are onto something there. Um, would a half inch tensor ring or smaller, if possible, be the same energy effect compared to a larger sized ring? And yes, um, no matter the size of ring, here are two regeneration rings. Thicker gauge, larger circumference. These are the exact same power potency fields, everything. One's just a larger round field. The thicker gauge, usually you can feel it, perceive it more within this physical aspect of us. So you can feel it more in the physical, usually, when the thicker gauge. But really, energetically, these two are exactly the same, as well as, you know, like our larger, um, our larger um, practitioner rings are the same power and potency as like a little ring that you would fit on your finger. Um, let's see, and just going back to chat here, Sinan, thank you for helping me remember your name. I'm, well, remembering how to pronounce your name. Sinan, I am going to actually write that down this time because I know you're always on here and I appreciate you being here and you ask questions all the time. So I want to be able to, um, properly pronounce your name. Thank you, Sinan. And then Barry, um, yes, and please do, Barry, you can contact me at twistedsage at hotmail.com. Um, and see none, I think your tools, bovis values are in the billion band. Regeneration tool will be in the trillion band. You know, I, I, yeah, I believe that. Um, let's see, and then Just going through, uh, pardon me, you guys, and just going through and reading chat to make sure we didn't have any questions here in the chat. Um, let's see. And then uh, Marie is saying, people stare at my silver infinity pendant, including medical doctors. has worked wonders to mosquitoes come at me for, for whatever reason. Um, <laughs> interesting. Okay, and then let's see. That is everything, I believe, you guys. We've covered all the questions here, and we actually made it through in less than an hour today. That's pretty fantastic. Um, yeah, so again, we'll have the um, – today here on the 22nd of May, we release the, the, the SITS pyramid, the meditation pyramid. Um, it's like $200 more than the mini Ascension Pyramid. Um, unless you're international, I'm sorry because the UPS shipping is so flipping expensive for something of this size. Um, it's a little bit more for, for international shipping. Um, and then, but it's a phenomenal little pyramid. And then, of course, again, by the 1st of June, we should have the little gridding pyramids uh, ready to go. And hoping that soon we will have the little bovis chart pendulum 
Dowser. So we'll see about that. Um, thank you guys again for being here. And yeah, next week, let's see if we can do some fun meditation work together. But uh, for now, please do check out the rest of the seven videos that we've done for 50 Question Friday. And if you'd like to see the meditations, just scroll to the end of those videos. Within that last five minutes or so, we usually do some pretty powerful meditations. And um, so if you're going to look for some great meditations, go to the end of the 50 Questions and Answers Friday videos. All right. Much love, you guys. Thank you so much for the support. We'll see you next time.